an important update on my project turning bed sheets into a dress. Welcome to the Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing. In a previous video, I showed you my little shopping trip to Target where I picked up this twin sheet set and said I was going to turn it into a dress. Now, I didn't really do a lot of guesstimating while I was there. I just figured it would work. And booyah, I didn't get one dress out of it. I got two dresses and then some because this is my leftover fabric. So I'm going to show you the dresses that I made out of this one set of sheets that cost me $13.98. So really I got two dresses for $7 of material each and plus the cost of the pattern and everything but for dresses that I like that are hopefully custom made for me they turned out pretty good. So the two patterns that I used this is the one I'm wearing this is Sew House 7's Tea House dress really fun pattern there's no closures no zippers no buttons or anything so it really just has this like self tie thing and really just a pretty large v-neck. So this dress is, I would say it's for kind of a, an advanced beginner or an intermediate sewist. This should probably not be your first dress. I did find this facing piece. So it's got like a back yoke and then a front facing piece that goes down to the waistline. And I found that part to be a little challenging. So this dress features a v-neck line, front and back neck yokes, front seams, inseam angled pockets, cuffed short dolman sleeves, and it has three different length options. You can do a hip length top and above the knee dress or a T length dress. I chose to do the knee length dress just because, I don't know, I, I wasn't sure if I would have enough fabric, ha ha ha. And I don't know, I just liked the way that one looked. And also depending on what kind of fabric you use, it really makes the dress look quite different. If you use a real drapey fabric, it looks much different than if you choose a more structured fabric like I did, which is a 100% cotton bed sheet. So it also has two different tie options. It's got an inseam below the bust wide tie, which is what this is, or you can do a spaghetti waist tie through a back tunnel. I didn't really want to do that just because I don't really like spaghetti ties that much. Maybe it's just me. And you pull it over your head. There is a lot of ease in this dress. So I actually sized down, I should be a size eight, but then when I was looking at the finished garment measurements, they were huge. So I chose to do a size six and I thought it was totally fine for me. Um, so yeah, that worked out okay. I will say I used too heavy of an interfacing for the facing and the yoke parts of the, uh, the dress or like the neck. So the neckline, you're supposed to put interfacing both on the main pieces and your facing. I one chose interfacing that was too heavy. I did Pellen SF 101, which was way too much for this. Plus when I was direct messaging with Sohow 7, which side note, that was awesome customer service for them to DM me and give me some tips on what I might be doing wrong. That was way above and beyond the purchase price of the $18 I paid. So thank you very much Sohow 7. I thought that was really cool of you to do. And also the other pattern I got, which I'll get to later, the creators also offered some, some very uh, generous uh, notes about, uh, you know, if I need any help, I can contact them, that sort of thing. So I think it's really great that these indie pattern companies are doing this. That's something that maybe the bigger pattern makers really can't do because there's so many patterns, but because these are smaller companies, I think it's great that they're able to offer very, very personalized, uh, customer service. So when I was messaging with Sew House 7, they recommended that I either use much lighter interfacing, which I ordered some from a company called Fashion Sewing Supply, which I'll link below. They're actually based out of like my hometown of Alden, New York, which was really neat. So I ordered a few different types of interfacing and I've heard great things about the company. So I'm looking forward to trying it in my next dress, which I'm really excited about because it's from the Tilly Tilly and the Buttons book, Love at First Stitch, which will definitely be in a future video, by the way. So they recommended that I either don't use interfacing on the pieces or that if I do, just to do it on the facing pieces. So just because this fabric is pretty heavy, I really didn't need interfacing. And that did make the neckline at the back kind of bunch up a little bit. And I also had a harder time getting the facing pieces to lay flat. You're supposed to put the facing into the dress so that it overlaps the seam a little bit 
and then you can stitch in the ditch and hide the stitching but also enclose the facing pieces I had a pretty difficult time with that but I and I ended up kind of glue basting that with uh, Elmer's school glue but I really should have made the like it tells you to fold all of those seams of the facing in about a half inch I actually would have done maybe like three quarters of an inch instead just because even after I folded them over and then laid the pieces down I actually wouldn't like I wouldn't have caught the the edge like there still would have been a raw edge if I had so I ended up edge stitching instead so I did like a quarter inch a quarter inch outside the uh, seam lines so I know that kind of doesn't make sense but when you're actually making it it will so that was the only part I found kind of tricky but I think if I make another one which I would like to in another fabric and I've got some fabrics in mind that's what I would do I know that's kind of hard to explain but when you're looking at it you'll 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 see what I mean so the other pattern I bought was now this is sort of a like a pattern series it's called woven essentials and it's a collaboration between a very well-known quilter fabric designer pattern designer Allison Glass and a woman who I was unfamiliar with named Karen LePage Karen actually after I posted a picture of this on Instagram offered help which Karen that was that was awesome and very very kind of you so this is a really cool garment series kind of thing where they give you several different pattern pieces for like a skirt, um, a bodice, different sleeve lengths, and then you can kind of interchange them how you want. So I chose to do a bracelet sleeve with a more like fitted skirt dress that came up to about the knee. And I thought it looked, you know, I was kind of, I've been looking to make more dresses with woven, woven fabric. Um, that's that are a little more fitted and this was definitely a great option the instructions in the book now there aren't a lot of pictures so if you're really again new to sewing this might not be your first project but if you're looking to do something a little more advanced this uh, booklet also shows you how to fit your muslin and really get your bodice fit just right I think I did an okay job I have a uh, a smaller bust so I did a I moved the bust dart lines up a little bit higher one thing I should have done with the dress though is I should have tapered the sleeve seams so that like and the other dress and the, like there was a little bit of gaping at the neckline and who wants to see down your shirt Ugh, that's kind of creepy to think about but I should have graded the seams and tapered them off a little bit more and this booklet actually really explains that concept plus they have an online sew along where they have a lot of pictures and more descriptions so I really felt like between the booklet and that website that offered all that help I felt that was a great resource for making all these pieces and now that I have my bodice piece pretty much fitted I think I would be able to definitely make some really cool options in the future I mean really there's so much you can do with just this one pattern series like you can really make just about anything you want like you could do pattern hacks so there oh and there's also a tunic so you can make a tunic with like a little um, inset piece in there so there's a lot of things you can do with it and I really thought this was a good purchase so this was about $22 and then my Sew House 7 Tea House dress was about I think 18 and I, I believe shipping was free on that one and I ordered it directly off the website and I got this one off of Amazon but you can pick this up in quite I've seen it in quite a few different places online plus they also have a knit series so it's basically the same the same thing but except it's for knit fabrics so I think this is a great sort of so I think these are great patterns for sort of the advanced beginner slash intermediate seamstress and I really enjoyed making both of these dresses the woven essentials dress this was the first time I did like a like a set in zipper I've done invisible zippers before but I thought the uh, the way that they do the zipper in this pattern is pretty easy and not too difficult I did interface I used my some light interfacing on this zipper panel and that kind of made it a little more stable so that you didn't get any like waviness or bumpiness or anything like that but you, there is one step that this was a little slow going where you're, you have the facing pieces and then you're supposed to like fold the seam fold the raw edges in and then you're supposed to like hand sew the arm cycle but I thought that was a little bit tedious that was the only part that took me a little bit of time 
but the finished product does look pretty neat inside and outside so maybe it was worth it i don't know but i do tend to prefer patterns that don't require a lot of hand sewing but both patterns were a lot of fun to make and i thought the finished products were were pretty good and now these were wearable muslins and you know i just figured i would pick some cheap fabric and at least if i messed something up it you know wouldn't be a total you know waste of money but they both turned out like they're both very wearable dresses the one thing i will say i do not like about any patterns in general is the tracing and the cutting out part these are paper patterns so at least i didn't have to like print out a gazillion pieces of paper and tape them together that's one thing i don't like about pdf patterns i'm gonna be honest but i have so many in my bedroom right now i've got so many pattern pieces that are just laying around i'll show you those but i've spent many hours i spent quite a few hours tracing and cutting out all of these pieces so that did take kind of forever but that's part of sewing so there's not really much i can do with that but i would love to know what kind of patterns you guys are sewing this month so let me know in the comments did you find any awesome patterns that you want to share and if you have any questions about these two patterns the woven essentials booklet or the tea house dress i'd be happy to try to answer uh, what my experiences were and i will see you next time